ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله فقد قالت لي ولا تقولون الا وانتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم indeed the praises for allah therefore we praise him and we seek his assistance and his help exclusively and we seek forgiveness from allah from allah and we seek refuge with allah from the evil that emanates from within and the harm thereof whomsoever allah guides there is none to misguide him and whomsoever Allah allows to be misguided, there's none to guide. We give open testimony that there is no deity worthy of worship but Allah. Highly glorified is he. He has no part in the dominion of his creation. We give further testimony that Muhammad, to whom the Quran was revealed, peace and prayers be upon him, his family, his companions, those who are gathered in righteousness. I mean, what follows after, I mean. O oh, you who believe, have taqwa, this deep and incomparable regard, this reference, this fear that is due solely to Allah. Have taqwa for Allah as it is his right to receive taqwa and die not except as Muslims. Surely Allah speaks the truth. Assalamu alaikum, beloved Muslims. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us another wake up call, another opportunity to affirm, to reaffirm our faith. With our actions. We are people who understand that it is not enough for us to simply make verbal professions. It is not enough for us just to say we believe in Allah. We know that at the beginning, but we know that we spend a lifetime proving that we believe that we submit to Allah. And that's our daily, that's our daily endeavor. And sometimes we are more successful some, than we are at other times. Right, that is the that is what it is to be a human being. Right, subject to the pull, to the push and the pull of those forces that are good and sometimes those things that take us away from from that mindfulness, that taqwa, the remembrance of Allah. So we thank Allah for giving us a mechanism to reaffirm ourselves, to redirect ourselves. Uh, before we get into the uh, the brief football for today, we want to make dua for. Uh, Imam Dr. Mikhail Ramadan, Sister Agnes, and also I just found out Sister Amy L. So we got three of our community members who uh, just has tested positive uh, for COVID. So we pray a lot, bless them all with a, a an easy go of it uh, and a quick recovery, inshallah. And to his credit, Imam Ramadan, he reached out to me at about one, I guess, I, when I saw the message, it was like 1.25 in the morning. And uh, to let me know, look, I'm supposed to be up. I'm not going to make it. But here's my football. <laughs> right? This is what I was going to give. I say, alhamdulillah, you know, I, I appreciate that. I said, um, perhaps it's the next time that, that you're up, I find it difficult to, to, to give anybody else's. But what he did give was a beautiful theme, which was a, a spiritual awakening. A spiritual awakening. And I think that is very appropriate for us because that is what we find ourselves in. This is a this is a manifestation, it's a representation of that spiritual awakening. awakening. When we can come from wherever we were, however we were, and come together for the remembrance of Allah. That is a sign of that awakening, considering that it is so easy to get on autopilot out here. To just go about our day and be consumed with ourselves and those things that really don't have any real bearing on our real our, our real future. We sleepwalk. So the spiritual awakening, this thing, I, I, I truly appreciate that idea. And inshallah, we'll be able to incorporate some of that into this brief uh, book out of day. So we find ourselves at a time where we are constantly um, made to look at the excesses and the, the results of those excesses in society. And not just national, but globally. We're witnessing the, the poisonous results of excess, the poisonous results of the pursuit 
and consolidation of power and how it poisons those who have it, who come into power and poison those who are unfortunately under the uh, under the authority of those who have that power. So in Surat Ashura, the poets, there is a reflection. Allah gives us some of the dialogue that was given in Prophet Hood, he came to his people and he's talking to them about how they are, how they are tyrants and how they have abused their power. And understand that the context of this is where the, the Quraysh at, at this time, they are getting a lesson from the past. They are hearing about themselves through somebody else, through a third party. And sometimes we need to be taught this way, right? We're not, we're not able to see our deficiency. We're not able to see how we're going wrong. If somebody comes to us directly and says, hey, sorry, you, know, you really, you really, uh, uh, you really talk too much. You know, you always talk every time I hear you, you know, every time I see you talking. I might not receive that, but if you tell me about somebody else, you know, man, that brother Ahmed over there, he is always talking. And every time you see him, you give all the scenarios and I begin to think, is he talking about me? All right, so we have to sometimes we're not able to receive the message by us being called out. And Allah does call out people directly, but he also uses other people to give those messages. So when the Prophet, when he's talking to the people and he's calling them back to Allah, right? he's trying to not just remind them, but he's pointing out there's a major deficiency in your application of power, how you use power. All right, so he, said, he says to them, he says, uh, says when you when you uh, use power, when you have when you exercise authority, do you, you you use it like tyrants? You use it like people like oppressors. All right. So when you have power, you uh, you recognize that you have power. You've been given power. And it's not just that you have power. You have been given power. That Allah has allowed for you to have the the power. That is a result of all the advances that you have made. It's a result of the resources that you have been allowed to tap into. It's a result of the, the, the progeny that you have. It's a result of all of these things that have put you in a position of authority. And you use that authority like tyrants, like strong, like dictators. And what is what 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 do we gather from this? Is it just the, the observation? Is it just observation because? As I said, we're in a society where power, the accumulation of power, the, the amassing of power, it has had a poisonous effect on those who have that power. And it also, what does it do? It also poisons those who are underneath. Especially if you are not spiritually awake. If you are going about your business on autopilot, you're not paying attention to how that power is, the, 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 the poison is just trickling down. It's trickling down, this is, and it is infecting the hearts of people so that people begin to see power not in the way that Allah gives us power. When Allah speaks to us about uh, this, this term wazi, many of uh, we're familiar with the term wazi from uh, in Nizan, right? From uh, Surah Rahman, Allah talks about how He has created the heavens, right, with, with balance. He has created the highest, the highest points of reference that we have that we continue to study, that he has created them with a sense of balance. So if there is, and a part of the balance really quickly, a part of the balance, is, it is not only the protection that it covers, right? It, it took for a while for us to catch up and understand the the, low, the, the layers of the, of the, the heavens, the layers of the sky, right? You got the stratosphere, the ionosphere, and it's another sphere in there. I don't know which one it is, but... <laughs> But those spheres being intact allows us to move about with security and not fear the results, not fear the, the destructive power of the sun's rays. We're protected. So there's a there's a provision of, of protection, right? And then there's also the aspect of the beauty of the heavens. Right? And as part of that beauty, so there's also another provision. Go back on the other side. The provision side is what does Allah says? He sets down rain from the heavens for us. Right? And from that rain, we get produce. Right? We get the water that we need. All of, all of Allah's creation gets the water that it needs. So we got protection and we got provision. 
there's a balance that's present that's present in it. Small sign, powerful sign that Allah gives us. So when we think about authority, how Allah has used his authority and how he presents it to us in a way for us not just to be recipients of that authority, because Allah has also invested us with authority, right? We are the Khalifa. Allah has invested us with, with authority. But he has not invested us with authority that we lose the balance, that we lose the balance of signs that indicate that there should be a protection and a provision there's a protection and a provision that comes from that. But instead, what happens? We get we get the opposite. We get a sense of uh, a sense of uh, entitlement or power that corrupts, a power that is uh, a power that is in existence only for itself. I want to share with you. This is from. Uh, Sahih al-Bukhari. No, this is Sahih, uh, Sahih Muslim. Jabir uh, reported, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Beware of oppression, for oppression will be darkness on the day of resurrection. Beware of stinginess, for stinginess destroyed those before you. It incited men to shed blood and treat the unlawful as lawful. And then, uh, this is narrated by Abu Dhar. The Prophet Wasallam said, O oh, Abu Dhar, do you see that the abundance of possession is riches? Verily, the abundance of possessions is not riches, but richness is the richness of the heart. And poverty of the heart is true poverty. So we have authority, right? We have a, a oppression. I'm sorry, we have oppression, and then we also have richness. And then I guess I'll also throw this in from uh, the, the sage uh, Bob Marley. He said, Some people are so poor that all they have is money. We are in a time now where power is being consolidated. Power is being, the, the gates of power is being fought over. Not for the sake of relieving oppression. Not for the sake of, 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 of giving access, right, of lifting people up. But simply to amass more wealth, to amass more power. I'm going to intentionally not name names. But this is a, an awake crowd. We, we say woke in a completely different terminology here, a completely different uh, sentiment. We are people who are paying attention to those who are looking to take power. And they take power actually encouraging others in that which is unlawful. They take power for looking for power from the basis of uh, what we call a, a deficit model. I mean, that means that there's not enough. Right? In order for me to have something, you can't have it. In order for me to, to eat good, you got to eat scraps. In order for me to have security, you must live in a state of terror. And that is the social reality that is a result of that sickness of the heart. The sickness of the heart that is brought on by a power that does not have the balance. It does not have the balance that Allah has dictated, that Allah has shown us through his signs and also through um, through his word. I'll give you uh, one more. So. <laughs> this is from uh, Sahih al-Bukhari. Narrated, Ibn bin, narrated Abdullah bin Umar, writing about him. I heard the lost messenger of Salah and Salam saying, All of you are guardians and are responsible for your ward, the ward. Some of you may have heard the term right? It means a shepherd, right? That's the thing, the worthies. But all of you are guardians and responsible for your wards. The ruler is a guardian and the man is a guardian of his family. The lady's a guardian 
and is responsible for her husband's house and his offspring. And so all of you are guardians and are responsible for your wards. We do read this and understand that some of, you know, you just have your own homes, right? So this is not a, a matter of you being a guardian for somebody else's home, but consider the logic that we are all responsible. We are all, we are all guardians. We're all invested with the responsibility of uh, this term of being a, of being a shepherd, right? That means you're looking out for the, the interest, for what is what, what is nurturing, and you're also looking out for what is what is harmful. And you stand ready to defend, you stand ready to protect. Right? So we all have that, we all have that responsibility. Oh, I did have to get this last one. Actually, oh, I do have it's been done. From uh, Sahih Muslim, it's reported that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, any servant of Allah whom Allah places in authority over people and he dies while he is deceiving his people, Allah will forbid paradise for him. Allah will forbid paradise for him. There, there are people who are telling you they don't believe in an afterlife without telling you they don't believe in an afterlife. Simply by their actions, sim simply by the way that they go about their the, uh, how they go about discharging the authority and the power that they have. Now, I mentioned that a lot of what we're in right now is a result of, or well, I alluded to the fact that this, a lot of this is the result of the balance that is not present. All right, when it's, when the, uh, the, the Thamud, you know, when, when they are being admonished, says, you know, when you have power, you, you use it like tyrants. You don't use it like the people who are there to resolve a, the concerning issues of the people, right? You're there just for your own sake. I want to bring our attention to something It's a bit closer uh, in time, but it speaks to, it speaks to this poison. There's something called the, and you can just show me by Nas, everybody know what the FCC is? So there was a time, there was a time that this part of the, uh, this body, this oversight body, Federal uh, Communications Commission, that it was required all the way up until the, was it Federal FCC something? I might've got that wrong, but I know I got, I got the initials right. Look up the name, but the job was to really be over the uh, media, right? And they had, they had all the books for, for years that there was to be supposed to be balance in terms of any political, uh, any political uh, speech. And I don't think it was not just related to political speech, but it had the greatest impact in terms of political life. Political, any political speech, there had to be room for an alternate view, opposing view, right? And we understand something. We understand that the reason behind this said that they were worried that if they were not allowed, if there was not a check, if there was not a balance there, that the people, the people who are consuming the uh, the products of these media organizations, and I think we just mentioned this a few weeks ago, that there's like six, uh, in the time we talked about, about six or seven organizations that run all of the media, that own all of the media, six or seven. And the fear was that with, and this this predates, you know, there were more. So, but it, the fear was that there would come a time that the people would be influenced, that they they would become biased, their opinions would become, they would be formed in a way that would not have balance. It would have we have this type of partisan polarized society that we have today. They said, no, we don't we don't need this. Right? We need to make sure that we have checks, we have balances. But what has happened? 19, 1974, in the mid, early to mid-70s, they did away with this. And now we are all too familiar with, you know, you got your right media, you got your left. Right? So power has 
uh, has been consolidated and they use the polarization. They use the biases that have been produced through this polarization, through a system that does not, that does not foster dialogue. People actually speaking to each other, but at each other and against each other. So there is a division now that exists and it profits those who have power. So they stay in power as long as that division exists. This is something for the, the spiritually awake to be aware of, to be mindful of. Because just as Pharaoh used his magicians, right? That was his go-to. He was when he was confronted for his crimes. But Musa and, 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 and uh, Harun, the last piece be on both of them. When he came, when they came to him, first thing he says is, "Hey, uh, give me a second. Give me, give me my magicians. Give me my sorcerers. Well first. Give me the people who have the access, who have the ability to communicate with the people, and to sway them." And their purpose is what? The purpose is me staying in power. Is me keeping the system that has that has benefited me, that has profited me and those who came before me, and that I will pass on to those who come after me. So today's magicians, right? Today's magicians are media. It's our pundits. All saying the same thing in the same way, same language, and with the same purpose. And that is to keep the mind and the hearts and the spirits of Christ. And those who would actually pretend uh, to print, pretend to come to? Uh, they stand on the platform to say that we're we are here to restore America. We are here. We are here to restore liberty. Well, they've actually fallen into that. That I think says that those who come with 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 uh, to promote steadiness and promote oppression. It says the result of that is that you will have people who promote what is unlawful. They will make the lawful, the unlawful seem lawful. And they do it under the guise of trying to trying to pretend that they're doing good. But those who are awake at this particular time, we understand that we must have balance. And we are a community of balance. We're not a community of, of perfect people, but we are a community that is uh that is uh insistent, that is insisting on continue, continuing to return to Allah. That's, that's consistent in trying to live with balance, right? That balance of understanding of our protection, protection and its provision. And understanding that we also have responsibilities as being as being shepherds, as being guardians. We also have responsibility to lead with this idea of protection and provision for, our, for ourselves and for, for, for those resources that Allah has blessed us with. And not to, not to see those things as things that have actually ele elevated us, made us better than our neighbors, better than the person next to us, right? Separated, but to see those things as a part of as a part of Allah's uh, uh, blessing, as a part of what, what he has actually given to us. So may Allah make us righteous stewards of everything that he has given to us and trusted to us. May Allah make us those who, uh, who live with balance, who live with purpose. May Allah protect us from being, from being oppressed and from being those who oppress others. May Allah keep our hearts soft open to his word. May Allah keep us uh, in, in line with his word, his messenger, and the believers, inshallah. Amen. <laughs>
three or four miles and I'm just able to go do it. I don't think about a disconnect. The disconnect happens when I want to get up and I want to just, I want to walk to the mailbox. And I got to think about, okay, well, hold on. What foot am I going to start with? Um, hold on a minute. Maybe I need, I need to slow down. Maybe I need to stretch, right? Because the body, the body starts to, to separate a little bit. It's not, it's not as, uh, it's energetic. It's not as obedient, right? That's just from the internal. But what happens when you have a near-death experience? When you have a near-death experience, it, it moves from outside of you. You start to think about all of the intangibles, all of the things that you have absolutely no control of. All of those things. And you begin to see, again, the spirit. The spirit. The body The body is, is, it is temporal. It has a, a shelf life. And, and that is also probably why uh, the older we get, the more, they say, the older you get, the more religious you get. <laughs> A lot of folks. You know, you start paying more attention, you want to do, you know, get more prayers in, more charitable. Say, just trying to get into heaven, just trying to get to paradise. So we have a situation where one of our presidential candidates, at a, at a near miss. Well, I guess somebody had a near miss. And we would think for most people, for many people, when your life is almost taken from you, that it might result in a moment of reflection. That it might soften a heart. You might want to like, uh, I know some of my, my, my parents generation, I remember, what was his name? Uh, was it George Wallace? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he became, a, became, a, became a different dude. He was a staunch segregationist. Staunch segregationist. Assassination attempt got softer. Sometimes when our lives, when, our, when we see our mortality, we begin to think about eternity. And we think about what we are placing and sending on before ourselves. What will, what will we be met? So it's a national example of what could be, what could have been a, a, a moment of, of humility, a moment of, of, of reflection, even a moment of repentance. It's not meant that way. It wasn't meant that way. And that should remind us that some people, some people will not get the message until they are sitting in the fire. Some of us won't get the message until we are given our record in the wrong hand. Or they say some folks just don't believe that it is reason. So there's a cautionary tale for us in this moment where some, some, uh, some folks' hearts are hardened. They are actually pushed more uh, to, to extremes. In this moment, as opposed to this being a moment of reflection, a moment where we actually take stop, stop and realize that we have a history, a history of political violence in our nation, a history, a long and established, a well-established history of political violence. And none of that, unfortunately, has actually solved the hearts of those who are in power. It has only made them double down on their pursuit. It has only made them more harsh in the way that they, uh, in their use of power. So Muslims, as I conclude, I want to remind us that this is not, this is not simply a message for us to, to comp contemplate on. It is a message to remind us that we have a much needed place in the, the civic discourse of life. We have a much needed place in the, the educational and the, the, the technological and, and healthcare and in government, we have a much needed place. Understand that sick people don't generally give themselves the medicine that they need. Somebody has to come along and diagnose them and give them, give them what is actually going to cause them to, uh, to, to get better. So we're a part of that. 
we're a part of that. I want to close by reminding us, and I wish I had, I'm going to paraphrase I am, please. When the Lord, this is, um, this is one of the battles, and the, the believers are told, they said that um, if they are, so what is it? They said, 10 of you, you can take down 100. All right? Matter of fact, it's, I think it was a large number. It was a thousand. All right? And they brought it down, brought the numbers down. And it says at this particular time, I'm not doing this justice because I want to give you the, 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 the fullness of this ayat. But what it alludes to is this. It says at this particular time, it says even though you can take on much more as a minority, you can take on much more, but I'm going to make it easier for you. So if it's, if it's 100 of you, you can take on, uh, you can take on double. All right? You can take on double. But there's a qualifier in it. It's, it's at this particular time. And it leaves, it leaves uh, the, the thought or the suggestion that there may be a time where you, you have even less, your number's even less, but you will have the potential to take on even more. You have the potential to take on more than, than, the, than the believers during the time of the prophets. That may be your reality. And I see us fulfilling that type of, of thinking that we are fewer now in retrospect in terms of the, the overall numbers. But we can never think or look at our numbers as a minority and think that we don't have the capacity, we don't have the ability to take on this, the, the challenge, the numbers that are in front of us. The law has given that to us. So be hopeful, be purposeful, be mindful of the law. Remember that we have something to contribute. Remember that we are going to be held accountable for how we have discharged the authority that Allah has given to us. And we want to make sure that we're doing that with a sense of balance, with a sense of, of mercy and the purpose that Allah intended when he gave our father Adam Salam the responsibility that's for us. We are, we are the inheritors of that responsibility. So we don't have the, we don't have the luxury of being bystanders and commentators. So we must find our ways to be a part of the solution, be a part of the fresh, inshallah. So may Allah preserve us and help us to reach our goals in service.